So up until now, we've been presuming that we had sort of a, a straight line PPF curve between two goods X and Y, and that these things had constant rates of return, constant rates of substitution, and everything seemed very simple. And it was, and it was great. Uh, but what this says, and what we concluded with in, in all these cases, was that each country should only produce one thing. And clearly, that's just not the world in which we live, right? Every, every country produces lots of different things. And we have uh, some countries produce, multiple countries producing the same thing. So how can we explain that? How can we explain how, let's say, the United States, for example, we produce our own oil and we also import some and we also export some. That seems a bit strange. Okay, so what we need to do is modify this PPF curve to be more consistent with what actually happens in the real world. Okay, so to do this, uh, let's tell uh, a familiar story. Uh, we'll describe uh, Tom Hanks in Castaway. All right, so for those of you who have not seen the movie, um, I apologize, this will probably spoil at least some of it, uh, but not all of it. Okay, so, um, but if you want to skip this video and, and not, you know, ruin the movie, maybe go watch the movie and then come back and see it. Uh, or, uh, since it's been over 10 years since that movie came out, uh, let's just go ahead and presume that everyone who is going to see it has already seen it, okay? And so what we have Tom, is we have Tom Hanks on his island, and let's pretend that he has two options, all right? One, he can uh, harvest uh, coconuts, or he can catch fish, okay? So those are his two productive capabilities, or his productive options, are to harvest coconuts or catch fish, okay? And so let's just plot this on a graph, or we'll have these options, okay? So this will be coconuts, and this will be fish, okay? And what we know is that if Tom Hanks spends his entire day harvesting coconuts, let's say he can get uh, this many coconuts, so we'll call this um, C1, and if he spends his entire day catching fish, you know, he can catch, let's call this uh, F1, fish, okay? And so normally what we would do, or if we were following our lessons from before, we'd just draw a straight line from here to here, and we'd call it good. But here's the thing. We all know, if you've ever been fishing, that there are some spots that are better at fishing than others. Okay, so we know that some fishing spots are better than other spots, and we also know that some areas are good for growing and others are less good, okay? So now, let's pretend that we are, that Tom Hanks is here, okay? So all he's doing all day, every day, is harvesting coconuts. And he says to himself, man, this all coconut diet is terrible. I need to get some protein or at least some variation, otherwise I'm gonna go even more insane than I already am. And he decides that he wants to catch some fish, okay? Now, Tom Hanks is not dumb. Okay? He's going to want to give up the worst coconut field first, because then he's only giving up a few coconuts. Conversely, if he's going to go fishing, and he's not fishing at all right now, he's going to probably want to go to the best fishing spot first. So notice that his coconuts have decreased a little bit, and his fishing has increased a lot, okay? And let's say he eats the fish, and he says, oh my gosh, this is the greatest fish ever, I love it, okay? 
And so he wants to give up even more coconuts, okay? Now he's already given up the least productive coconut field first, so he's gonna have to give up the second least productive coconut field. So notice that he's giving, giving up one coconut field here, and he's giving up another coconut field, but giving up this second coconut field means that he has to give up more coconuts. And he's already gone to the best fishing spot that there is, okay? So he has to go to the second best fishing spot. Let's put it here, okay? So now he's going to be here, okay? And so then let's say there's only three coconut fields and there's only three uh, fishing spots. He says, okay, I'm gonna go all in on fish. So he gives up the remaining coconut field. Okay, notice that this distance here is bigger than this distance and that this distance here is bigger than this distance, right? He's giving up the best coconut field that he has and he's going now to the worst fishing spot that he has. And so what we can do is connect these dots and notice that the PPF actually bends down, right? He's giving up the worst, so the worst out and best in, right? That's the rule he's following. So he gives up his worst fishing spot or his first worst coconut spot first and going to the best fishing spot first. Then he gives up the second worst coconut spot to go to the second best fishing spot. And then he gives up the best coconut spot to get to the worst uh, available fishing spot, okay? So notice that the PPF bends down. And what this says is that the marginal cost of catching fish in terms of coconuts is increasing, which means that each additional fish that he wants requires him to give up more coconuts than the one before. So if we put this, so if we said the price of fish divided by the price of coconuts, so the relative price of fish to coconuts, and we plot this, it would be increasing in the quantity of fish, right? And this is how we get a supply curve. Okay, so this was, if we go back to when we started lesson five, this is how we determine from the PPF a nation's supply curve. We could do the same type of thing. Instead of talking about Tom Hanks, we could talk about the United States. Instead of harvesting coconuts and catching fish, we could say producing oil and computers or whatever goods we want, and we get the same diminishing uh, marginal return or increasing marginal cost, which would generate this upward sloping line. Okay, so now let's take this and we're going to apply it to uh, our ISO value curves. Okay, so if we had a curve, <clears throat> PPF curve, okay, <clears throat> the same logic that we developed in that intuition video, right, in the last video, is still going to apply. Okay, so I'm gonna be very careful in how I draw these things. Okay, so if we had uh, ISO value curves that looked like this, we call this V1, call this, oops, too far, V2. And you'll notice I'm going to be very careful in drawing this one, which is probably indicative of something. V3. And V4. 
4. Okay, so if we notice that at this point here, which we'll call point A, so at point A, we are on the highest ISO value line possible. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> so what we know, right, is that this country or this economy is going to want to produce this much stuff. So we'll just drop some lines here, x1, y1. So what this says is that value is maximized by producing x1, y1. All right, and this economy will maximize the total value of their products, x and y, if they produce at this point here, A, which is x1 amount of x and y1 amount of y. And so now, notice that what we can do is we can explain why countries would produce more than one thing, right? It turns out that if they faced increasing marginal costs of production, which is a very reasonable thing to assume, then value is maximized at some point on the PPF that is not at one of these corners. Okay, so we call solutions like this a corner solution, which means that it is only producing X, or if we were here, we'd only producing Y, therefore they're known as corner solutions. But in the real world, <clears throat> we don't really observe corner solutions, and that's because the PPF curve is bending down, right? Increasing marginal costs mean corner solutions are, to, or at least tend to be, suboptimal in terms of generating value. Okay, now let's suppose that the price of X increases. Okay, so suppose the price of X increases what do we think <clears throat> is going to happen? Okay, so let's make a prediction. If the price of X increases and we are selling X and Y, do you think that we're gonna want to make more X or more Y, okay? So if we can sell X for more money and nothing else changes, so our relative productivity stays the same, everything stays the same, this PPF curve doesn't move, right? If the price of X increases, then we want to make more X and less Y, okay? But let's see if we can figure out why that's going to be true. So remember, the slope of this isovalue line is negative px over py, okay? So I'm going to use blue to illustrate what happens when the price of x increases, okay? So if the price of x increases, right? So let's just assign some numbers here. So let's say the price of x was equal to, uh, how about three? And the price of y was equal to two, right? Then this fraction is equal to negative three over two, okay? <clears throat> if the price of x increased to how about five, or let's do a different, let's say, yeah, like five. Uh, if the price of x increases to five and the price of y stays the same, then the slope will then become negative five over two, which is a steeper line. So what happens is these, all of these different ISO value lines are going to rotate this way, right? They'll rotate like this. Okay, so I'm going to draw them in blue. Okay, and let's say 
that instead of being at point A as being optimal, because of the increased price of X, okay, what ends up happening is this point, which we'll call B, becomes optimal. All right, and at point B, notice that we are now producing this much stuff, or this combination. All right, <clears throat> so at point B, or with this new price ratio here, value is maximized at B, which is uh, to say that it's X2 y2 okay so we can now see sort of what will happen in various countries as the relative prices change if the price of x were to increase these iso value lines become steeper and we move to a point out here which will then maximize value here <laughs> if it were to go down right, if the price of x were to decrease relative to the price of y the ISO value curves would rotate this way, and we would move to, let's say, here. Okay, I don't, unfortunately, have another color, so I'll have to make do with just this. All right, so that, if that were to happen, we would move to point C, right, where the value would be maximized right there. Okay, so we can see how different economies will respond to changes in prices, right? If the change, if prices change, all it does is it rotates the ISO value line or ISO value curve, and we continue on maximizing value, but it'll be at a different point. Okay. In the next video, we'll talk about how we determine uh, where countries will consume. So at this point, we've determined production. So uh, the PPF and ISO value lines determine production, okay? But one thing that we're curious about, we're curious about consumption. So the question now becomes, where do we consume?